Right, so this is the second attempt at my COVID-19 first vlog video. It's a extremely unflattering angle, but I really don't give a shit because I'm actually naked in bed. Uh, I'm not gonna scroll down any lower, you fucking pervert. Um, it's March. She's gonna have to look at the date again. Mar March twenty fifth, twenty twenty, twelve forty nine a.m. And this is day six seven. Um, so yeah, the previous video was two minutes long, and basically it's a statement of circumstances of what's been going on and my purposes and intentions of this video. And uh, anyone who knows me, who's been in conversation with me, will know that I constantly say that I have like twenty seven trillion tabs open at once. Basically, all the branches of thought. I don't think I'm exclusive in that sense. I think a lot of people have a lot of different ways of thinking, but a lot of people have a lot of concurrent ways of thinking about different ideas. And I am no exception. And, but these are just my thoughts, and I want to list them out. So if ever anyone asks, so what do you think of this whole COVID-19 business, I can just share this video. Wow, okay, we're at the same time. Anyway, yeah. Um. So I guess I'll start off with just how I've been living. <laughs> A glimpse into the apocalypse. Um, yeah, so I was not a very good uh, adherent to the movement control order two days before I went for... I blame you, Malaysian government. Uh, there was a tourism fair in which... I know, it's fucking stupid, right? But in which there was a promotion by our wonderful, lovely Police Diraja Malaysia. Uh, don't get me started on policing and the state uh, I, I'm not I'm not going to go swing full libertarian in the sense of like oh the state is evil law is, I, I think law enforcement is necessary in the sense of like don't let killers run loose uh, Malaysia is a country with strict gun control so the hard gun leaning libertarian slant of protect yourself and force your borders I'm sorry, man. I'm just not going to go into that in this conversation. Maybe in further future vlogs. Yeah, maybe that's what this is all about. I'm going to switch my hands because it's tough holding. Uh, oh, as you can see, it's shaky. Yeah. And I already have other activities in which I will solely and exclusively train my right arm. So, yeah, that's a different matter altogether. Um, so, yeah, COVID-19. How I've been living is that, yeah, I... I uh, movement control order was enacted on the 18th uh, and and there were talks about it and already we had seen what had happened in Italy and South Korea and Singapore and so I went to a fucking tourism fair maintain as much not distance why social distancing but you know just try to keep my hands to myself not touch any surfaces try to keep at that point in time a foot two feet away and and I too was indulging in paranoia or paranoia symptoms of paranoia in the sense of every time I have a scratchy throat uh, and I had a bad sore throat just before this whole thing set in. Who knows, you know, like I could be saying all this as I'm asymptomatic. My symptoms could develop tomorrow. I could die in a week. Who the fuck knows? Life is fleeting. Anyway, yeah, so the pr primary purpose that I went there was to pay my fucking summons. Because I've racked up, oh boy, yeah, why not? Let's just disclose everything. I've racked up like close to 4,000 ringgit worth of traffic summons since 2012, okay? So it's not like I drive like a fucking maniac. It's eight years. That's an average of two or three summons a year, which is still... Ah, some of them are really, really, really fucking stupid. Okay, and some of them are also uh, traits of typical Malaysian behavior. Uh, parallel parking, double parking, uh, th those are quite a few. Speeding, there's quite a few. One or two rogue accidents uh, of which I was at fault. I mean, of course I'm at fault. I'm a terrible driver. No, I'm not a terrible driver. I just, I just have too great a reliance on my abilities and don't take in the fractional percentile chances. Whoa. The fractal percentile chances of accidents happening, which is kind of like COVID-19. COVID-19 is not a kill-all plague, but there are fractal percentile chances of people dying, which we will get into. Um, yeah. So I went there to pay my truck summons and the queue was long and... 
and it was a lot of people and I was paranoid not super paranoid but I was like you know okay shit I'm placing myself in a high risk vector of transmission area situation and I'm like this is stupid just to pay my summons because there's a 50% discount so like I'm gambling with the cost of my life at the price of 2000 ringgit that's not very smart just noticing a lag here every time I shake the camera a bit or just how my lips are moving like slower <laughs> anyway yeah so so that was a movement control order and then I had a friend over for like a day or two uh, you know because humans are still social creatures and then I think I started to be alone on the first day of the movement control order which Technically, when they announced it, or knowing what I know about, uh, and 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 I and I say this not like oh I'm an expert or whatever, but I keep myself informed and abreast on Twitter and Facebook. I ingest too much information for my own good, and uh, anyone who knows me will tell, will, will will attest to this that I should have known better and I should have done all the other stuff earlier. So, yeah, I I. I mean, fuck up. I just, you know, yeah, I fucked up. I totally fucked. Up. No, I didn't. I didn't. I, I, I just was acting to my own convenience, like most of humanity does. Anyway, um, so yeah, movement control order, and then I took out food the first couple of days, and it's nice because it, it, it's so basically what I've been doing since December is just I've been hunkering down. I, I bought an. 2019 was a crazy year blah 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 I'm recapping the 2019 story to like everyone 2019 was a crazy year uh, there was a lot of work which was rewarding financially not so much creatively even though I went to a lot of workshops which allowed me to ingest and absorb a lot of new information about the arts uh, uh, if you don't know me I'll give a self introduction video about who I am some other time uh, yeah, but I didn't get to output it creatively because a lot of the work that I was doing was more commercial based, which is great financially. And then my brother got married and I have a niece uh, who is in London right now with Boris Johnson and all the incompetence. Uh, and yeah, you know, we're going to talk about that, about incompetence. I, I mean, that's one of the things I want to talk about, but there's just so much to cover. Holy shit, this is what it's like having 27 trillion tats open in your mind. Uh, disclaimer and disclaimer, I had... For legal reasons, I probably shouldn't say it. But anyway, I had something which put, could potentially alter the state of my consciousness. Uh, it should kick in. It's been eight minutes, so maybe in another... 15 minutes at the most or probably even now who knows um yeah see diverted completely lost track uh so i ordered grab food yeah so anyway my 2019 yes exactly so 2019 was like commercially very successful somewhat on oh, my brain up until december uh at which point i figured i was burnt out because i literally had been going on stop since March and April and then I bought myself a new laptop which did not necessarily balance my finances but then I hunkered down and just gamed because it was the first laptop I've had in like six months and I played games and games and games six months six years what the hell a new laptop in six months is great thank you universe let's make it happen uh, except no the tax the taxing of resources on the planet I don't need all that much uh, rare earth materials coming out of the ground to indulge in my gaming needs and desires once every two years would be great yeah thank you universe thanks um yeah so holy shit where am i yeah so so i've i went into that gaming quarantine of just like staying at home and playing video games for like December and most of January and then January was Chinese New Year and then my birthday month of which there were a lot of severe massive indulgent meals so holy shit I am totally ready for this quarantine because I was eating really well at the end of February and March and the people that I've shared meals with would know this like we went to some fancy ass places for food yo yeah anyway um so you know, and, and I also felt myself creatively like 
wanting to come out of my shell, do things like this, and and boom, this hits, and I'm like, shit, all right, it's back to quarantine, I, you know, and and but it's part and parcel of the whole thing. It's been ten minutes, and I'm really judging judging myself because I watched so many YouTube videos, and I'm like, oh, the optimum length for a video should be this, 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 and this has just been like me like talking a lot. Um, yeah, so I'll try to wrap it up and maybe, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to give myself like half an hour, okay? I'm going to give this video like half an hour. So if you want to hear me rant and ramble for half an hour, I'll, I'll try to put demarcation points so you can skip to, yeah, stuff. Um, and, and yeah, so just before the MCO, <laughs> the MCO, the MCO happened, uh, I'm, I was very fortunate to have uh, a few well-paying gigs. The you do ad that came out with the tagline, thank you, Loba Loon. Thank you for branding that on my forehead. I will gladly carry it because, you know, I'm the talent. I'm paid to do it. I'm not endorsing any brands. Uh, this will delve into a discussion on capitalism uh, directly per se, but I am proud of my work. I am proud of the technical achievement that was achieved through that ad, uh, I not so much in terms of like, oh, that it achieved its target of selling whatever it wanted to sell, but like as a shoot, like what we did and how the elements got put together, what the director did, what I had to go through and what I was feeling. I was like, yeah, you know, I give myself a little pat on the back, give the entire team a little pat on our backs to make that accomplishment. I'm scratching my butt right now, scratchy, scratchy. Cause you know, I'm human. Yeah, and, and, and those things built up a little bit of a nest egg coming back into uh, coming back into the movement control order. And and so I feel relatively secure uh, with the amount of resources and, and, and money that I have. I'm like, yeah, I could minimum wage my life and survive for the next four months at the most, like on bare on the barest of bare minimum and and i mean you know it's quarantine so it's not like rich living is a thing i don't feel the need to go out and indulge in a steak every week to preserve my sanity god i wish i could afford it i totally would if i could but then again that leads into the capitalism discussion um i do miss coffee i do miss liberties i do miss going out and 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 enjoying myself and taking my time and living a laissez-faire life and and all of and all of that but uh yeah but it's covid we'll jump to that really soon i can feel it mm. so just how i've been living is i've been reducing myself to one meal a day which is absolutely fine it's kind of my little weight loss program because i've been inert i've been very inert so all my fellow Malaysian artists are there. There's a there's a big clamor of concern, and I'm not gonna jump into fear based and love based stuff just yet. Maybe not even in this conversation. Uh, there's a big clamor, clamor of concern about uh, finances and sustainability and how artists and small businesses uh, and 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 the gig economy people are going to survive are gonna come out of this. And I have been ingesting and absorbing all those perspectives and viewpoints and I haven't allayed my thoughts or, or, or digested and formulated anything because I, I'm secure in this moment. But who knows, you know, the, 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 the ringgit could completely tank. I, 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 I kind of hope it happens. Like that's, if we're going to change things, like let it be the dramatic, oh, look at the uh, let it be that dramatic, ginormous shift of the downfall, the literal downfall of capitalist capitalism, like great. Um, yeah, let, let that happen. Uh, but otherwise, I'm financially secure somewhat to survive for a short period. Uh, until life goes back to normal and 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 so that leads me into yeah you know and and <laughs> attempting to cook spending money on groceries buying like literally buying things from scratch i don't cook i don't ever cook and i don't think i want to uh the the time and the labor that it takes does not 
equate to the convenience of me going out of my doorstep and and again this is Malaysia going out of my doorstep and going down to a, a mamak and having a decent meal and and having the luxury of choice of vegetables of rice of flavor looking at you white people that's racism uh, and but you know it's I bought stuff I bought materials I'm learning and and it's yeah I I, I, I don't begrudge it. I don't exactly enthusiastically rush out to, oh, this is a chance to learn how to cook, blah, blah, blah. No. No. I would do it in luxurious conditions because I'm a snob. Uh, also, because I like comfort. I like comfort. I enjoy comfort. I have gotten past the phase of needing to beat myself up because I enjoy comfortable things. Uh, but... Yeah, but it's an uncomfortable time and we're going to go into philosophies and deep stuff. So yeah, I'll put this marker at around 50 minutes of like, you know, so about COVID-19 and capitalism and spirituality and some measure of love base and fear base. So what we have on our hands, ladies and gentlemen, what we have on our hands, ladies and gentlemen, is a global pandemic. It is the first I've ever experienced. Every outbreak of disease, Ebola, HIV, AIDS, SARS, MERS, did not affect me in my social circumstances and my social behaviors in my 36 years of life. I'm 36 years old. What, what, what the fuck is age? I'm balding. I'm balding right there. But yeah. Um, Choi, I mean, I mean, no, not you, Choi. I mean, if you're even watching this, uh, yeah, don't perpetuate the things that you don't have to perpetuate. But anyway, um, yeah, I remember seeing fear, extremely fear-based articles on the Gulf, the first Gulf War with the first George Bush, and 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 being scared in a bathroom, a ten-year-old scared in a bathroom because of a newspaper article at home. Because I thought the world was coming to an end, and I had just started doing research on World War Two for like a school assignment, and I was like, "Oh no, this is gonna happen in our time," but it's not. All those fears were always imaginary and uh, and and relatively ethereal and illusory, or, or disconnected one or two degrees away. But this pandemic is real, and and real in the sense of like the tangibility of it is very very practical. We are seeing the numbers. Uh, and and go into like fake news and, and like global conspiracy, global conspiracy. Sorry, yeah, new rock stars, whatever. Um, uh, no, it's total conspiracy. It's not global conspiracy. You know, like global conspiracies of of cattling and uh, shepherding the human race or whatever. And and for me, when it comes to fake news and conspiracy theories like that, it it's like I love indulging in them. It's like I'm oh hell yeah because. It's so much easier and so much nicer to place the big bat on something that is externally outside of your life to displace the things that you can do with your life. And this is me doing something because I've always been meaning to vlog like this. And now I am. So I'm pat, proud of myself a little bit. Uh, vomiting these thoughts out. Who knows if anyone's even going to watch any of this shit. This is 18 minutes of me talking. What the hell? Uh, and And so... But this pandemic is really real in my lifetime. And we are given so much information at an unprecedented rate because we have the internet now. We are more on top of things than ever before. And when I say we, I mean the mass of humanity and the access to the information. A lot of people choose to remain uninformed and thereby put their lives and other people's lives at risk. And... and uh, my bias and my dis discrimination at this point comes at that fact of I know knowledge is a privilege but if I can access it so can everyone but that's not ex ex exclusively true not everyone is as privileged as me I am considerably more privileged than a lot of the mass of humanity but at the same time, there's enough displacement in me to realize that, you know, I, I, I feel very small about a lot of things. 
I feel worse. I feel very small about a lot of things in my life that that I feel like if I can access this or if I can achieve this, if, if this is available to me, because it's, 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 it's there are no barriers to any of this. Uh, and the barriers are education and consciousness. <laughs> there are no literal hard border barriers to any of this information. I know them because of the people I follow and, and, and the, my education, uh, my literacy enables me to be at a certain point where I can ingest this information, but still it's, it's accessible to most. And yes, oh, how privileged blind are you? Blah, 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 blah. But again, I cannot keep arguing for the lowest common denominator, which is the absolutely illiterate, Ill illiterate third world migrant somewhere who needs to carry water for two hours a day back to their village. You know, and, and yeah, mass appeal in terms of like, oh, appealing to the greatest mass of humanity or whatever, or middle class and social classes, and blah, 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 blah. Like, I cannot brain the calculations of that right now, but like, the information is available. Outbreak.my is available. The WHO uh, is available. And like, yes, we know how much the UN has fucked up in its lifetime. The UN has done some wonderful, amazing things, but the UN has also done some absolutely horrendous things. And there are a lot of things that governments and international bodies do that we are completely unaware of because they have black bag projects and shit and false flag operations around the world and god knows what the fuck but the reality about a pandemic like the coronavirus is that people are dying and people will die and the statistics are one thing and and the way that people calculate the statistics, you know, can be called into question. But when you have Wuhan and China and South Korea and Italy and Iran and like four places like that, and then seeing other countries pop, <laughs> literally like Plague Inc. around the world, and then seeing our numbers rise, the reality is you can you you cannot discount the numbers that are already in existence and you can say oh that's all fake news and then and then i i i do not want to have that conversation with you i do not want to expend the labor of re-educating you or 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 indulging in your viewpoint because i think your viewpoint is uh uh ignorant not in a negative connotation way but it's it it's 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 it closes off your own perception to focus on a perception of things which are illusory in a sense of they do not directly correlate to affecting people's way of life and way of being. What does are the numbers? And the numbers indicate, and, and I don't want to fear monger, but like, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm very unaffected personally by COVID-19 I say this now again you know in a week I could be on a ventilator who the fuck knows my greatest fear is loss of ability and like it could happen but blah 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 blah, blah indulgence as a negative connotation yeah yeah but like you know if the numbers state that the infection rate is 11% if the numbers state that the of the 11% the mortality rate is 2% in Malaysia right now our mortality rate is is one or is it four i think it's 4.3 percent when i checked yesterday so around the world the the side effect of the pandemic is that we are going to need to brace ourselves for the reality that four percent of the people that we know are going to die and they they don't necessarily need to be someone direct you know it doesn't need to be oh my my colleague at the office or my the secretary downstairs or you know the cleaner or the janitor it could be my colleague's uncle or my the secretary's grandfather or you know it's like the the janitor's fourth child but that's the reality a lot of people are going to die a lot of people already have. 
and and the people who've lived through pandemics or epidemics like New York in the seventies in the HIV in the height of the HIV AIDS crisis, you know, like like listening what to to them say what it's like and how that changes their lives. How people can start living flamboyantly because they're gonna die, or their friends have died, and mortality is like just knocking at their door, and of course it changes their behavior and makes it them do things differently, and. You know, what does this all mean for us? I I cannot imagine what it's like if even... You know, I've had, I've had friends die. I've, I've, I knew a family on MH17. Uh, and I'm not directly affected to it. So I don't know what this means for me. What it means for my empathy or my care. I... I I, I don't think it's that I do not care. I think that I insulate myself very well against feeling the literal tidal wave of emotions that happen in these things. Uh, and and also being able to access them as part of work, which is, is acting as required. But generally, I don't. Generally, and maybe my shields are too good. Shields are too strong, Captain. Uh, yeah but and and then the other side of all of that is what it means and and I follow I still follow some new age teachers and and I I think the evolution of my life is that now the ones that I follow are the ones that give advice which sounds practical uh in terms of practical in terms of and, and practical I mean a lot of different things for different people you know to the to the to the person living in the outback like hunt a rabbit and gut it and you will receive good crops for the next season sounds like a practical thing because they already hunt but like when I say practical it's like it it shapes and formulates thoughts in a way that does not deal with too many intangibles and and if they do they deal closer to them as perspectives that you can adopt or believe in or not or choose or not and shift your behavior in your life accordingly uh so one of the ones that i that that i love is uh karen curry parker who is a human design practitioner uh who has this thing called the quantum lightning system i i haven't deep dived into it but i just like her weekly updates because it you know and and some of you guys might be completely like what the fuck is this shit but like it aligns it it i feel an alignment to it i feel a resonance to it and and she uh one of the things that she's been talking about very recently quite consistently about is is how uh, well-being is the economy of the future and I'm like fuck yeah for, for anti-capitalist me it's like yeah hell yeah fuck money and and like just that statement itself well-being is the economy of the future like gives me hope of like and we are seeing that we are seeing that with how capitalism has dealt with homelessness has dealt with more for like first world countries but you know for us as well, Kuala Lumpur just uh, uh, sorted accommodations for homeless people in, uh, in 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 KL because otherwise there would be greater vectors of transmission for COVID nineteen and it's like you could have sorted this the whole time and capitalism and guy yeah, and 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 you've got the whole capitalism versus uh, capitalism and eco fascism debate about it's not. Thanos, it's it's capitalism. And it's like, yeah, they've had the money the whole time. And one thing that grinds my freaking goat, and I'm gonna try to wrap things up, or, or at least come bring them to a certain point, right? At this point in time, is the whole Bill Gates letter on the spiritual lessons of COVID-19. I'm like, no, Bill Gates, shut the fuck up. Expend your resources. And I know you already are. But you're a fucking billionaire, like can cannibalize billionaires. If Bill Gates was in front of me and I knew that my direct action of cannibalizing him 
would bring parity to a large amount of the population at the cost of my life or my humanity in terms of my actions fuck yeah I'd fucking saute the fuck shit out of him no malice or hurt towards Bill Gates the human but like as a human and an entity that you're you find yourself in a position where you're in charge of so much resources and the betterment of the planet is there and you are aware of it and you talk about spirituality that shit is out of fucking alignment my brother and if your saute kidneys can amend that then yum yum time but you know that's a perspective um yeah it's just ridiculous and and I would love for the radicalization of against capitalism to be the best and greatest byproduct of COVID-19. But like when I reflect that upon myself, I'm like, I've been fucking inert. And and if this 31 minute video right now is, is a means of doing something about it, then then let this be a start because I haven't been working out. I haven't been eating well. I haven't been eating clean. I haven't been meditating. I haven't been refocusing my efforts. I've been cleaning my house because I, I realized that without cleaning services to do it for me at the cost of money, my my living conditions would be uh, untenable. So, so yeah, you know, we're going to wrap things up at that point and I'll drop more videos like this just expanding and elucidating my thoughts even 31 minutes and a mama is nothing but like oh me listening to the sound of my own voice for 31 minutes was like oh geez who the hell put anyone through this shit i hope it's even audible because i know that there are a lot of points where i just go low and run into a certain cycle of self musing self musing thought where i just like talk like this and i'm more talking for myself and blah, blah, blah. anyway yeah see you on the other side or the next video or whatever and if you listen to this if you've listened to this entire thing please create discourse with me like you know people like oh reach out to your friends for comment here i'm like no don't don't like don't reach out uh i don't need people to reach out if someone's going to reach out and i do that i do that so i'm guilty of it if someone's going to reach out then i'm like i'm fine Save yourself the effort. Uh, I'd rather indulge in my games. And okay, so this is another topic for the next video, I guess, about like behavioral habits and like what I've been doing with my time in terms of gaming and how that sates my tick, tick, tick. Um, don't reach out. Reach at me with this course. If you've watched this entire video and I'm like, holy shit, thank you for giving me like half an hour of your life. And you disagree with me, teach me. If you disagree with me, teach me. I am always open to learn. If you, if you agree or have different perspectives, share them. I can't say that I will read every comment or, or ingest every link you send me because I'm already ingesting a shitload of shit. But I welcome it. And I, I do accept challenges, but not trolls. Uh, or, or arguments. I, I just accept information and education. So come at me, bro. And as always, literally, because so many radio series, but it's like, yeah, I do, I do, I do reach out to you with love because we're all human beings and like, Lord knows we're all fucking touch starved by now. It's been six days and touch is a vital human component. So yeah, take care of yourself, be safe, wash your hands, maintain your social distances, you know, maintain your physical distances but keep each other in your thoughts at the very least. Hanahe.